Okay, we're here in the studio with Bill Robinson tracking the vocals for the new Decrepit Birth album, Axis Monday. Uh, how's it going, Bill? Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, just here in the studio, lamping it up. We're going to be finishing this new album. This is going to be our masterpiece right here. We're going to get you some live recordings. We're going to make sure that it's going to sound excellent. You're, you're going to be first hand on the scene while we lay these down right in this vocal session, this microphone. Well, let's get started. All right, let's do it. Let's have it. It's time. All right. You, you got it over there, Erwin? Uh, all right. Thanks, pal. All right. All right. That, sound, that sounds real good, Erwin. We should, we should keep that. Right. We, should, we should keep that. That was pretty good, man. Perfect. Decrepit Birth is a California-based, progressive, technical death metal act. Uh, not a whole lot out there that really sounds like them. Uh, I think personally that they take that style from the 90s, that Florida-based progressive death metal mold that death really uh, created out of the ashes of the early death metal sound, and they really modernized it in really interesting and unique ways, in a way that I, I don't feel like a lot of other bands have done. Uh, there are a lot of technical and progressive death metal acts, but those backs, they, they really feel like they're complex for the sake of being complex, technical for the sake of being technical. Decrepit Birth always had a really strong sense of songwriting, and they really took it to interesting places, especially on Polarity, which I felt like was probably one of the best progressive technical death metal uh, albums in a very long time. It had these sweeping, soaring uh, leads with these really interesting change-ups in the time signatures and they were really moving in between all these different components in, in ways that I don't feel like anybody did for a really long period of time. Um, Eric and I actually got to see them uh, just shortly after they put that album out with Naraxis. It was a really excellent live experience so we were really looking forward to a solid follow-up but unfortunately there really wasn't anything after that. The band entered uh, some kind of strange hiatus uh, and then they eventually lost two of their band members, uh, the drummer as well as the bassist, and nobody really knew what was going to happen for a while. There were just rumors and whispers and nothing else. Uh, but then, uh, maybe about a year ago, two years ago, we got wind that they had submitted a lot of content and they were working on it and they were really getting their shit together. So here we have Axis Mundi, uh, this 2017 effort, and we've got uh, a little bit here and there to say about it. So as longtime fans, as David said, we were really excited when they released the first single, Hieroglyphic, and then the second single, Epigenetic Triplicity. But there was something that sounded kind of weird to us, and that the vocals sounded really, really muffled. Like, as, as you saw in the intro, we feel like they were almost screamed into a pillow, or like they were recorded in another room. They're just so quiet, and just they have no dynamics to them. They kind of suffer from like that wall of sound issue where everything, it's really flat, not dynamic, and they're just not well produced. They're not loud at all or muffled. Yeah, they, they just sound very odd. It sounds like, uh, if you've ever seen The Godfather, you might know that Marlon Brando shoved a bunch of uh, cotton balls in his mouth when he did all of his takes to give him this uh, kind of like older, more muffled tone. It sounds like he just like put all the cotton balls in his mouth. Like, it, it really sounds that muffled. There's no way to make out any of the lyrics. There's no way to really make them out as vocals. They just sound like another unpleasant layer here in the production. And it, it just really brings everything down to a lower level. Everything on the record suffers because of the vocal production here. Yeah, I have to wonder if that may be because Bill is 52 years old and he can't do the vocals as well as he used to. I know years and years of doing harsh vocals can screw with your vocal cords really badly. So I'm wondering if that isn't 
intended by design for that reason or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, I know that Homeless Bill likes to smoke the special herbs and spices. I know that can burn the throat. Who knows? All these uh, withered years, you know, it's, it's very possible that he's just not as capable as he used to be. But no judging. A man of 50 uh, still doing vocals just like this in a progressive death metal act, I've got to give him props. Oh, yeah. When we saw him, he was running everywhere. Then again, he was about 42, 43. It was about 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. He had a lot of energy. He's an, he's an excellent front man, so he still has that going for him. Oh, yeah. He definitely uh, still has all that power on the microphone. It's just that him here recorded just doesn't do him any justice. While we're kind of talking about the vocal production here, I, I do kind of want to discuss the other issues with the production. I know this is more an issue with myself than with Eric, um, but I do want to mention that I just feel like the mixing in general is just very disappointing. There's a lot of really solid songwriting on here, and it's really let down by an overly compressed production job that makes the drums just sound ultra-triggered, clicky, and just overall unbearable. It makes the guitars sound way too loud and ridiculous. I, I can tell that they're trying to get a really epic quality out of these soaring leads, but they just kind of sound hokey and everything sounds overly processed here. Um, in general, it just sounds really miserable, especially on a, on a really expensive budget, I would imagine. They're on a fairly decent label. Pretty sure they're on Nuclear Blast. So yeah. They're not hurting for money. I'm like, what the hell? Like, they deserve a better production job. This is an album that is entirely let down by the production around it. Uh, I don't have any complaints, really, about the songwriting, but everything else about it just decreases the value of the content. Well, yeah, considering how well the last album was produced, it's yeah. really a mystery to me as to how this happened. The album before it had pretty terrible production, if you remember how quiet it was. It was it was absolutely terribly produced. But then after the last one, I thought we were going to see more of that. And this is just... I don't know what's going on here. It's just a confusing decision to me. Yeah. I mean, you can see their first CD where it was just underproduced. This feels like the flip side of the coin. It, it just feels overproduced on almost every level. And... That, that's killing me. It's absolutely killing me. Other than that, I feel like there's really not a lot of complaining that I can really do about this album. The band still has every single component that really makes it powerful and prominent, even in the modern age of technical death metal. Their songwriting is just as potent as it was before, if not more so now. Uh, they've got some brutal, really just challenging and aggressive riffs on here that I haven't seen since the band's debut. Uh, it's really got a stranglehold on just about every other aspect of the songwriting. It almost feels like the progressive touches and the technical touches are exactly that. They feel like flourishes on top of uh, what is really a more streamlined approach, something that is a lot more uh, visceral and edgy and raw. And I actually like that. I feel like they took a back-to-basics approach after seven years out of the force and uh, came back with something that shows that they still have what it takes to really uh, stand up on, at the big leagues here. Yeah, there are absolutely plenty of highlights here. Like uh, the first single, Hieroglyphic, is a standout. And my personal favorite is Spirit Guide with its spacey keyboard sounds, kind of like uh, Faceless, uh, Born of Osiris, Veil of Maya, that sort of thing. Uh, I really would have liked to see more of that throughout the album. You don't see too much of the keyboard. I would have liked a bit more of the progier side, personally. You do see it at the last track, uh, Embryonic Genesis, but that's just an outro track. And it isn't a deal breaker that you don't see it again after Spirit Guide, but I really would have liked to see the progier elements come out a bit more. I feel like they really had something there, and they just didn't fully explore it. Yeah, especially considering that after you get Vortex of Infinity, Axis Mundi, uh, you really walk into the album looking for that next big track, and Spirit Guide is excellent. It is by far one of the best tracks on this album, and it is the most like polarity. It has the same style of those really blistering, high-octane, epic-sounding leads, uh, but really there's not a whole lot else like that. You've got a lot of more like brutal and more basic, not simplistic, nothing Decrepit Birth does is simplistic, no. but definitely more aggressive cuts after that, and the album definitely goes on a completely different tangent after that. Maybe that's the intention. Uh, Decrepit Birth has always been a band that really likes to keep you on your toes, uh, really take one direction and just completely go on a different tangent in the next, and that's what makes them great. 
Uh, but it is a little surprising uh, given a songwriting and uh, album writing perspective. That's not to say the, the brutal, more aggressive, straightforward tracks are generic or boring in any way. Uh, it's still a pretty good album overall. I think I'd probably have to give it an 8 myself. How about you, David? Uh, I really do like this album, and it, it really does deliver on a lot of fronts that I didn't expect it to. After a seven-year hiatus, I, I don't have any faith in everybody. That's, that's just how I am. I didn't expect to get anything out of this album, but I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, it is let down quite a bit by a really mediocre production job, and the vocals being so damn muffled kills them in the mix. I would rather there not be vocals on this CD. But, I mean, what else do I have to complain about? The songwriting is excellent, as always. Everything about it is excellent. It has just enough of a change up in the sound to really get people interested in the band again, and it's a really great starting point. It has so much promise for more albums down the pipeline. I'm really excited to see what else they can do after this. So, so what do you give it? Mm. I've been thinking about that one for a long time. I think I'd personally give it a 7. Yeah, there we go. The battery is dying, so I kept my mind sweet and short. And yep. I'm just going to... Don't know why I just kept rambling, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. As always, uh, thanks for tuning in to Heavy Meta. Uh, you as a viewer, you're, you're real important to some degree that um, Eric and I have never really gotten into. No. Uh, we don't really care, actually.